We're almost done with our brief look at the basic RDDs in Spark. Uh, all we have left is two more type of pieces of analysis that we did previously on our temperature data. Uh, last time we got through the counting the number of rainy days. We also have things that uh, gave us an average temperature on the rainy days as well as we did that two different ways. One using originally a fold and then we changed it to an aggregate to show how it could be parallelized. And then uh, another one using a uh, flat map. We also found average temperatures by month. Okay, so as we've seen, the RDDs have very similar methods. So I'm actually just going to copy these and move them over into our Spark code where data is an RDD instead and kind of see what breaks. Now, there is no par method here, but there is an aggregate. And you'll note that the aggregate method is now happy, it compiles. It does exactly uh, the same thing as the collections aggregate. It takes a zero value and then it takes two operations, the sequential operation, which produces objects of our new type U, and a combine operation, which combines two U's into a result. That is exactly what the aggregate on the uh, Scala collections does that works so nicely for parallel processing. And so this code is now happy. Uh, the other way that we did this was we flat mapped things. Now, the advantage of the aggregate is it takes one pass through. This really is the efficient way of doing this. But just to demonstrate the use of flat map here, we had also used a flat map to effectively do a filter and a map in a single pass. So it only keeps things that have a high enough precipitation. If the precipitation is low, it gives back an empty sequence. Otherwise, it gives back a sequence with the maximum temperature. So this is equivalent to doing a filter and a map uh, at the same time. Then we can sum them up. The only thing that's unhappy here is, as we've seen before, the RDD does not have a length, it has a count. What about months? Well, there is a group by operation that is defined on RDDs. Group by, and our simplest version here, uh, takes a function that goes from t to k, and it returns an RDD of k to iterable of t. So. That actually looks a lot like what group by does in the normal Scala collections, <clears throat> where instead we'd have a sequence of, um, of whatever our key type was. In fact, we can come here and hover over. You can see that we got a map from int to array. RDDs don't have a distinction between maps and, and the, you know, the normal sequences. They're all RDDs. They're just regular RDDs and pair RDDs. We'll come back and talk about that a bit more. Well, we do have an error here. And that is the fact that we, uh, oh wait, our count, or sorry, days here is an iterable. Which apparently iterables don't have a size, they only have a length. And this gives us back an RDD of int to double, which I can't convert to a sequence. I'm interested in seeing what this does. Uh, this would be our first use of for each. Normally we haven't done a for each. Normally I do like a collect and then a for each. The for each runs code on every uh, value that is inside of an RDD. We just want to see this run happily. And of course at this point this RDD is small. It only has 12 items in it because it has been grouped by months and there you go. Uh, however you will notice that even though we sorted here I'm still getting the months out of order. And that is because the, the sorting on the RDD and then the for each, remember that RDD is distributed across many executors. So the for each does not necessarily have to run through things in order. If I had really wanted these 
to be in order because I happen to know that this is a small collection I can call collect on it which will bring me back an array and then if I run this same code on that array the array will wind up being sorted and it will print an order because it's a standard array we know that we will get things in the order that we are expecting here when this one's done we can scroll up and look at our averages for the rainy day temperatures make sure they agree with each other as well as seeing what the monthly values are so here's the monthly values once again this time they came out in order because we were actually sorting an array rainy day temperature on average 69.3 calculated with the flat map calculated with the aggregate 69.3 so hopefully this has helped you to see that the RDDs are remarkably similar to the Scala collections, at least in their basic operations. Um, there are some more operations that we can do, and we're going to look at, at those uh, in the coming videos. It's worth noting some of those will only work well for certain types of RDDs, is when the collection inside has, has certain properties to it. So we'll see what additional functionality we can get in the coming videos.